Well, hello, and welcome back to another podcast episode with Brittany Bundles. You are listening to the Brittany Bundles podcast, where we empower people through entrepreneurship. And today what I'd like to talk about is I'd like to talk about opening the can of worms, so to speak. I uh, was motivated to make this because I recently did a video on my YouTube channel at Brittany Bundles going over ways to make additional income. And in that video, I talked about how I collaborate with different business owners and I show them a solution to a problem that they may have not thought that they had. And I explain the benefits of being able to not only recognize a problem, but also being able to couple it with a solution or solutions and how that can really start to not just empower other businesses, but also build your brand and create another stream of income for you. And so uh, if you want to know more about that, make sure that you go over and check out that video on uh, my YouTube channel at Brittany Bundles. But today I want to talk about opening the can of worms. And that's similar to addressing problems that others may not see. And there's a way to do this. But I remember early on when I was in sales, I would always be told, uh, don't open a can of worms. We had different... um, call metrics and objectives in sales when I was in the call center and opening the can of worms would a lot of times take a lot, a lot of time. And um, my managers and coaches felt like it was taken away from the productivity. And I could understand where they were coming from. And then it also resulted in more escalation calls because if you open the can of worms and you're not able to control that conversation or that call, that was something else you were trained to do, how to stay in control of the call, um, then a lot of times the managers would have to stop what they're doing and take over the call. It would be called a manager takeover and they didn't want that either. So we were told to stay away from opening cans of worms. And I, again, I understand where that, where that thinking process came from. However, uh, what I like to do these days is I, I like to be able to have the creativity to do what it is I want to do and be able to try new techniques and new um, strategies that maybe were forbidden in the workplace or in a certain workplace and see how it works and translates to my business. And so opening a can of worms can really help dive in deep, build a deeper connection with you and that customer or potential customer and client, and also help to increase your revenue, like I mentioned, and build your brand, build your, build your brand to become more reputable and more trustworthy because you are taking the time to open up the can of worms that a lot of people Uh, prefer to keep closed. So if you are interested in this podcast episode today, be sure to share it. You can share the episode on social media. You can share the episode with a family member or friend when you're riding in the car. You can also go ahead and uh, share it via text message. But I'm going to go ahead and give you all a moment to share the podcast and I'll be back in just a moment. All right. All right, so we are back. And the first point that I wanna touch on in regards to opening the can of worms is discovering and addressing problems and potential problems. So this looks like this. Let's say that you're selling hair extensions, right? And you're an e-commerce based business and a customer or potential customer comes to you and they chat you a question on your online chat system. And they say, hey, um, I'm considering purchasing three bundles of hair because I have this party to go to. I'm going to send you a picture of the look that I'm going for. Let me know which texture I should get. Now, based on the picture, you see that the picture is uh, a picture of a woman with a closure. And you notice that the picture is a lot more full than what the bundles that your potential customer is looking at purchasing. Now, What some would say is, okay, yeah, really cute style. I'll go ahead and send you over an invoice for for these bundles that you selected 
and um, I, I hope to do business with you moving forward. Now, at that moment, that customer may leave happy because they're getting what they want as far as they're getting the bundles that they order, they're getting um, access to the hair. You didn't have any issues, it's a smooth transaction. However, you and your heart know that they're not going to be as happy with the bundles that they chose because it's not going to give them the look of the style that they showed you. So they have three bundles of 30 inches and you know that it's going to be a lot thinner in density than the style that they sent over in the picture. And you know that the person in the picture has a closure. And so one of our jobs as business owners, as sales representatives, is to make sure that we are taking the role of the expert. Not saying that we know everything, but being able to identify what our customer and client is wanting and, and letting them know, hey, you can go ahead and purchase these bundles. They're gorgeous bundles. However, based on the picture that you sent me, if you're looking for this look, I would recommend going with shorter bundles. That way your density uh, is going to be a lot more full. I also recommend you adding a closure. That way your the style is gonna come up, come out um, resembling the picture that you sent me. Now you can still go ahead and get away with three bundles and the style if you have leave out, but is that something that you're wanting to do? Did you discuss having leave out with your style? It's just different things like that. And what that's going to do is that's going to show that customer that you actually care, that you took the time to ask additional questions, to really see where they're coming from, to understand if they're looking to have this style exactly, to give them advice on the density, to go above and beyond what a lot of business owners would do. So discovering and addressing problems and potential problems is going to set you apart from a lot of different businesses. What could happen? What may happen? Also, another good example is shipping. Let's say that someone comes to you and they want to purchase hair for a Valentine's Day sale and you know that the sale is about to end, okay? Or yeah, not, not even the sale is going to end, but you know that they're purchasing the bundles two days before Valentine's Day and your shipping is three to five business days. So there is a slight chance that maybe the hair would get there sooner because sometimes orders get there before the three to five business day mark, but you know more than likely they probably won't get their hair until after Valentine's Day. Some people wouldn't address it. Some people would just go ahead and get the sale instead of being upfront and addressing potential problems. So that potential problem would be they may not get their hair in time for Valentine's Day. Now that may result in you losing that sale at that moment because they may need hair immediately for that occasion, but that's going to result in them building more trust. And a lot of times people like to do continue business with those they trust. Just like me when I go get my nails done, I'll go to another nail shop, but I'm gonna continue going back to the shop that I trust, right? So be thinking ahead about addressing problems and also think ahead as to what the potential problems could be with that particular order. All right, so the next point that I wanna address is having hard conversations. So like the examples that I just went over, those aren't necessarily easy conversations or the easiest conversations to have with people because you are in a position where you're not just going with the flow. And a lot of times when you're not going with the flow, it can cause some people to be nervous and it can also cause um, conversations to take turns in ways that you didn't expect or foresee. So be willing to have, have hard conversations and be willing to allow the conversation to go down paths that you weren't necessarily expecting, but be prepare, prepared for. And you may be wondering, well, how can I be prepared for something I wasn't expecting? And that comes along with experience. So even though I may do business with someone, let's say the customer ends up getting very irate for some reason, um, I've had experience dealing with irate customers and my sales experience and working nine to fives. And even when I had my salon, there were some issues that happened um, with certain stylists. And so working with irate people 
if something that I have experience with. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but it helps me be better prepared, even when I'm not expecting that to happen, if that were to come up into play with my business. So I'm okay with having hard conversations, sustaining charges, um, standing firm on the no refund policy, standing firm on your prices, standing firm on your shipping timeframes, standing firm on um, requesting additional identification if there is a high risk order, just making sure that you are able to have enough confidence within yourself and your business to have hard conversations to make sure that nothing is going unturned to the best of your ability. So having hard, hard conversations is something I would definitely recommend everyone look into, everyone try to do, everyone not shy away from. A lot of times when the hard conversations come, a lot of people close down and you may notice some business owners stop responding. Some business owners uh, may hang up the phone and I'm not saying that you have to subject yourself to abuse or stay in a conversation where there's no respect, but I am saying that as an entrepreneur, there are going to be times where you are going to have sometimes, you know, some tough conversations and you may have tough conversations and the person may not even be irate with you. It just may be a tough conversation, a tough um circumstance or a tough question. Maybe it's a question that you don't know the answer to. A lot of people are afraid or nervous to say, I don't know, I'll get back to you. So just the more you do something, a lot of times, the easier it becomes. So be willing to have hard conversations, even when you don't feel like it. Um, the next point that I want to go to is be solutions based. Overcoming objections is a huge part of being an entrepreneur. You're going to have a, a, a um, objections. You're going to have um, different issues that arise. You're going to have questions that people are going to ask. You're going to have certain issues to, um, to, to bring a resolution to. You're going to have to be creative. You're going to have to think outside of the box sometimes. So looking at not how can I stay away from all problems, but how can I address problems when they arise is going to separate your business from a lot of other business owners in a good way. You want to make sure that you're thinking about the solution. So knowing that problems will come, uh, objections will be there, but what can I do to make sure that I'm providing a solution? How can I overcome these objections? So if someone is looking to get their hair by Valentine's Day, and I know that they purchase it today and I ship it to them, there's a chance that they may not get it. Checking additional options, thinking outside the box. Well, typically I don't deliver hair, but I looked and... Um, asked a few different questions in my chat and I could see that this person is literally 15 miles away from me. So I'm willing to make an exception and drop the hair off to her. Let me check and see if this is something that she's open to. So not only did I overcome the objection of that time frame crunch, but I'm also providing a solution, something I can do. Not what I can't do, but what can I do? And I'm also mentioning in the hard conversation, hey, you know, I would love to get your hair to you, but my shipping time frame is three to five business days. So if you order today, there's a good chance you may not get it by Valentine's Day. If you need it by Valentine's Day, are you open to meeting me for an in-person exchange? Things like that. Um, the next point is gaining trust. So even with that scenario, that's going to help put trust into the, 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 the person that I'm working with, a potential customer or client. That's going to help them be able to um, come to me a lot more easier next time if they have a concern or a question versus if I would have acted as if there's nothing I can do. Oh, well, you waited too late. It's not my fault you ordered at the last minute. It's not my fault you, you need hair right now. Some people have that type of attitude. So we want to start looking at people as people. Yes, they're potential customers and clients. Yes, they're um, um going to help make additional revenue for your business, but let's not look at people as just money or just an opportunity. Let's look at people as people, meaning how would you like to be treated in that circumstance? How would you like to be talked to in that circumstance? How would you expect to be um, taken care of and treating people how we really would like to be treated? The last thing that I'm going to go over is energy and patience. So making sure that you are getting a good night's rest every night when you can and that you're practicing patience because you're going to need it. So making sure that you have enough energy is going to be extremely important when you're looking at having hard conversations, discovering problems and potential problems, coming up with um, solutions, being able to overcome objections because when you're not rested, you're not your best self. You're not thinking 
your best. You're not coming up with your best ideas. And so we want to make sure that we have enough energy and enough patience, even when people may ask additional questions or they may take the conversation down a road that we didn't expect. Now, I do believe in keeping some sort of control in the conversation, meaning you don't want someone to walk all over you in the conversation or you don't want someone to take the conversation completely left where it doesn't have anything to do with your business or their purchase or your sale. And it's just people, you know, saying things and, and bashing you or um, cursing you out or whatever the case may be. I hope that never happens to anyone here. But just letting you know, you want to make sure that you have patience. You want to make sure that you're able to still stay professional when others may not be. And opening that can of worms, a lot of times that's going to test your patience because not everyone is going to be open to honesty. Not everyone is going to be open to having hard conversations. And that's something that you want to pride yourself in. Now, there's always a way to provide information, present information, and offer solutions. And that's something that we want to be working on every day as entrepreneurs and business owners. However, that's going to still need energy and patience. So protecting your energy and practicing patience is definitely going to help with this too. So I hope this podcast episode really helped with... Um, providing a clear idea of opening cans of worms, how it can help your business, and some things you want to be prepared when you are doing that. I do want to thank you all for tuning in. If you'd like to be a guest on the Brittany Bundles podcast, be sure to email me. My email address is the letter B, talks, T-A-L-K-S, at yahoo.com. Also follow me on social media. I am on Instagram at Brittany underscore bundles. That is Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y underscore bundles, B-U-N-D-L-E-S. I'm on Facebook, Brittany Bundles, YouTube, Brittany Bundles, and Twitter, Brittany Bundles. Until next time, I'll talk to you all in the next podcast episode.